Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today we're going to be taking a look at our Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Baltimore Ravens preview. Got a lot of pieces of information for you. Uh, back out here in nature, I just wanted to come outside. It's, the temperature's kind of cooling off a little bit. And so um, just wanted to bring you a little shots of around while I talk about the Ravens and the Buccaneers coming up. So welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. Let's start. All right, guys, again, welcome back outside at the lake. I wanted to bring you a bunch of tidbits about the Ravens versus the Buccaneers, which is coming up uh, Monday night at 8.15 Eastern time. So uh, let's, let's kind of get on into it. Uh, starting off with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are ranked ninth in total offense with 367.2 yards per game. They're 11th in passing yards with 230.3 yards per game. Ninth in total offense. 11th in passing yards, rushing yards. They got three guys that have really been running it pretty good. They're eighth in rushing yards per game with 136. Pretty balanced offense. Um, I saw a stat where the three most points scored in the NFL this season were, in no particular order, I don't remember the order, but I know the top three. They were the Commanders, who we beat last week, the Buccaneers, who we play this week, and us, the Baltimore Ravens. So, this game could be very interesting offensively. Could be very interesting and very exciting. But normally when games are billed to be like shootouts, they don't turn out that way. Normally. But we'll see what happens going forward. Let's keep rolling. As for the Ravens, they're number one in total offense with 453.7 yards per game. Passing, we're eighth with 248.3. And as you know, we're rushing with 200. I'm sorry, we're number one in rushing with 205.3 yards per game. If we continue to average over 200 yards rushing a game, I don't see very many people beating us because that's going to open up so much other stuff for our offense. But we'll get into that another time, another day, maybe even later on in this video. But rushing 205 yards a game, which is crazy. Let's go to the defensive side. Defensively, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are ranked 26, giving up 365.7 yards per game. They give up the 29th most passing yards at 252 yards per game and the 13th most rushing yards at 113.3 yards per game. Again, they're not the greatest defensively. We need to take advantage of that, like seriously. Um, I saw, I talked about it yesterday on the, the um, weekend review. Dean may be out for them. If he is, take advantage of that on the outside, if he is. But again, we don't play till Monday, so I think the final injury report will come out today, which is Saturday morning. Uh, for the Ravens defensively, we're 16th in total defense, giving up 334.7 yards per game. Now it comes the bad news. We're second to last in pass defense, giving up 275.7 yards per game. But to circumvent that, we're number one in rushing defense, only giving up 59 yards per game. Now, when I was typing this up, I was thinking, are people, I'm sorry, let me, let me change, let me change that thought. Do people get past the yards on us because that's all they can do is pass? Or are we really that bad in the secondary? Because we shut down the run and we discourage people from running early and often. They just say, F it and throw the ball. So is, is our <laughs> secondary that bad? Or is it the fact that people can't run on us so they just say, forget it, we're going to throw the ball most of the time? That's something to think about. Just, just ponder that for a minute. Again, 31st in pass defense, first in rushing defense. That normally don't happen. But trying to put a positive spin on it, I'm thinking because people can't run on us, they'd be like, forget this. We're just going to chunk the ball around. And that's where they get their yards at. Let's talk about some individual players for the time being and some individual stats. Baker Mayfield is thrown for the eighth most yards this season with 1,489. Lamar Jackson is just above him in seventh place in the NFL with 1,529. Baker leads the league in touchdown throws with 15, while Lamar is sixth with 10. 
Baker has five interceptions, which is eighth in the NFL, while Lamar only has two. So Baker has 15 touchdowns, eight interceptions. Lamar has 10 touchdowns, two interceptions. Touchdown interception ratio, do your math. Baker is fourth in NFL completion percentage with 70.9, while Lamar is 13th with 67%. So that's two guys that don't miss a lot of throws. Uh, 70.9, 67, that's kind of right in there together, even though there's a little discrepancy in ranking. That's not bad on, on for either guy. Baker has been sacked 17 times in 2024. This is fifth in the NFL. As compared to Lamar, he's only been sacked eight times. We, are, we understand Lamar has the ability to get out the pocket and move around. That's probably why, well, not probably why, that's why he doesn't get sacked as much. Baker has some mobility, nowhere close to what Lamar has. So, you know, the sack numbers will be there. And I honestly think, well, we'll talk about that later. I don't want to jump the gun. I don't want to jump the gun. Baker is next to last in time to throw in the NFL. That with only having 2.52 seconds to get rid of the ball. Next to last. Kind of indication of a weak link that we're going to talk about here in a little bit. Lamar is six in time to throw. Three seconds even. Three seconds even. Let's talk about some rush, rushing numbers for both teams. Uh, look, the Ravens and the Buccaneers. The Ravens, I'm sorry, the Buccaneers really have a three-headed monster. Um, Bucky Irvin leads them with 328 yards, but we all know Derrick Henry leads the NFL with 740 yards. Uh, but the Buccaneers, they get contributions from Rashad White and Sean Tucker. Sean Tucker, who recently had 100 yards versus the Saints and looked really good. And I, I think he got that, that time because they were beating the Saints so bad. And he made the most out of, out of his opportunities. So they have three backs that are over 100 yards. Uh, but Bucky Irvin is leading that charge. But I still think Rashad White is their best back. So they got three guys we got to kind of keep our eye on. Sean, uh, was it Sean Tucker, Rashad White, and Bucky Irvin. Oh, we can't forget about Lamar's 403 yards rushing as well. We talk about rushing, you know, I don't like to mention it much when, when speaking on Lamar because people want to put him in a running back category, but you can't forget about his 403 yards rushing as well. All right, the number 23, I'm sorry, the number two, three, and four yards per carry guys are in this game. Lamar Jackson is number two with 6.3. Derrick Henry is number three with 5.9. And Bucky Irvin is number four with 5.7. So yards per carry for this game, you know, well, for them should go down because we only give up 59 yards rushing. For us, it should probably stay the same, if not go higher for us. All right, Derrick Henry leads the league in rushing TDs with eight. And I throw some analytics out there uh, with rushing yards over expected. These are huge numbers. Derrick Henry is plus 264, while Lamar is plus 78. That's first and seventh in the NFL, respectively. But let's not forget Bucky Irvin. Bucky Irvin is also on this list. And what I normally do is I take the top 20. And if they're in the top 20, I mention them. But Bucky Irvin is 19 on this list with plus 34. You also have Rush EPA. Derrick Henry is second on this list with 19.9. Lamar Jackson is 16th with a positive 2.5. And Bucky Irvin is 20th with positive 0.4. Derrick Henry also leads the league in yards after contact. 422 yards, while Bucky Irvin is 19 on this list with 243 yards as well. Now, Bucky Irvin is the rookie from Oregon. Rashad White is an established back, and Sean Taylor is lame. We can't let those guys get rolling. We can't. We can't. But again, not to get ahead of myself, we'll talk about that in a minute. Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry, respectively, are number two and three with most rushing attempts over 10 plus yards. Lamar has 15, Derrick Henry has 14, and explosive runs. That's, that's what we need, that's what makes our offense go. That's really an indication of how the offensive line is starting to get their stuff together. And Lamar gonna get his explosive runs because they may come from in the form of scrambles and stuff like that too. But for Derrick Henry to be up there too, a lot of times when Derrick Henry have big runs, he not even touched till he gets to the secondary. Well, the second level, rather. And so that's a good, you know, a testament to the O-line and them getting their stuff together. Receiving-wise, and this is where I think the Buccaneers have an advantage over the Baltimore Ravens. Now, I know there's a graph out there that says, 
You know, our receivers are a lot better. I think it had us like the fourth best receiver combination with Zay and um, Lamar. But Tampa Bay got two two guys. We should have two guys, but Tampa Bay got two guys. Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. Receiving-wise, Chris Godwin is third in the NFL with 511 yards and five touchdowns. Zay is 11th with 401 and one touchdown. Chris Godwin is great and all that, and is really good, really fast, really good route runner. Is a guy because of Mike. Because of Mike is the deal. <laughs> yeah. Mike and Chris are tied in the NFL with five touchdown catches apiece. Both. They lead the league. The Buccaneers receivers lead the league in touchdown catches at five. Closest Raven is Isaiah Likely. And again, I normally take top 20, but Likely is 21st with three. Chris Godwin is number one in the NFL in Yak. You always have to catch. Um, Rashad White is 16 on that list with 192 yards. Godwin has 335. For us, Zay Flowers is on this list as well with 208 yards. And Justin Hill is on here too with 184. So we got four guys in this game that can really do stuff once they get the ball in their hand, whether it's in the short Short game, mid-range, or out of the backfield. You got two guys out the backfield that can catch the ball and make some stuff happen. All right, looking at PFF grades for the Buccaneers. They're eighth overall, fifth in offense, 14th in defense, and 23rd in special teams. That's according to PFF. Again, you take that how you want to take it. As far as the Ravens, they're second in offense, first, I'm sorry, second overall, first in offense, sixth in defense, at 24 for special teams. I think that defense probably should be a little lower, but depends on the grades. It, it is what it is. Now, when you look at the matchup, on paper, on paper, so we're looking at the Ravens offense, and I'll put it on the screen, the Ravens offense versus the Buccaneers defense. Just looking at it on paper, the advantage we have. I think at the tackle position, up front, I think we have advantage with Stanley and Rosengarden versus Tryon Sharinka and da Yaya, da Yaya Daigby, 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 however you say it. Now, they have the advantage on the interior, in my opinion. Vita Vea. Vita Vea is what you would call a certified, like Cam was barking on first take the other day. That's what Vita Vea is, a certified dog. And um, when if 100% if healthy, They're going to have problems in the middle. If he's 100% healthy, <laughs> Linda Baum, Falele, Makari, they're going to have, they got a dog to deal with this week. They got a dog to deal with. But I'll talk about ways to neutralize Vita Vail here at the end. Uh, outside, now, their top corner, I think, is hurt. But they do have some decent guys out there. McCullough, rookies, 89 uh, grade. Um, Smith, no, McCullough's not the rookie. Smith's the rookie, and it's playing very well. But they also got McCullum. Um, But if they don't have their top guy, I think Zay and or Bate could eat on them. Yeah, I, I really do. Bate came off probably his best game of the season with like 70-ish yards, maybe 66, something like that. And we know uh, Flowers had his career day with 132 last week. So we can win on the outside. But I think the real advantage for us is at the tackle position and um, – we're kind of even outside, but giving that ball to 22 and let 22 and 8 do their thing in the run game, which will open up other stuff. But, again, we'll get to that on the other side. Now let's flip sides. Defensively, the huge advantage up front. You look at those Tristan Wirfs. Can't take nothing away from Tristan Wirfs. He's all pro. He do his damn thing. So whoever's on that side, probably for us going to be neutralized. But them other four, we can whoop that you-know-what. <laughs> they you got Graham Barton, the, the rookie, at center. So you're looking at Graham Barton versus Travis Jones or Matt BK. We should win that all game long. Should win that all game long. Also, Cody Munch versus Matt BK or um, Travis Jones. We should win that all game long. So we should really extend that time to throw for Baker and make it even less this week. We just got to get after him and win his 1v1s in the trenches. Whoever gets the 1v1 in the middle, you got to win, whether it's Matt BK or Travis Jones. Now, we all know it looks different when the subs come in, but it is what it is. 
Uh, they have the advantage outside. Mike Evans, Godwin versus our corners. Now, I don't think we I, – no, I'm, I'm not saying that we can't contain them with scheme and, and timely plays, but if you're just thinking one-on-one, -on -one, they got the advantage outside, and I'll leave it at that. All right, got some um, some tidbits from each team real quick, and we'll run through those real quick for the Buccaneers. And I'll put them on the screen so you can see them. The Buccaneers' interior offensive linemen combined for allow 41 total pressures on 306 pass block snaps over the first three weeks of the season. The highest rate in the NFL, 13.4. Not good. Guys in the middle got to win. Guys in the middle have to win. That's the indication of it right there. The next one, Tristan Wirfs has totaled three games this season with at least 20 pass block snaps and left tackle and zero pressures allowed the most versus any lineman. Again, like I said a minute ago, Tristan Wirfs does his thing. He's a dog. Them other four, kick they butt. Next, a Baker Mayfield's 1,489 passing yards. 65% of them have come after the catch. The second highest rate in the NFL and a career high by 10%. Again, we talked about them having yak monsters. Uh, Godwin leads the league in yak. This is why Baker's getting rid of the ball. So that off coverage stuff can't happen. Can't happen. Now, you can still play zone, but you got to be up close to the line of scrimmage where Baker can't catch the ball and get rid of it. And we got to tackle. Got to tackle to keep them from getting extra yards. Like if they catch the ball, fine, so be it. Get their butt on the ground as soon as they catch it. Next, the Buccaneers are tied for the seventh highest blitz rate. 33.3% in the NFL this season and have not ranked outside the top 10 in any season under the top bowls in 2019. Now, we all know Lamar has been really, really good versus the Blitz this year. So whatever exotics Todd brings after the first two or three drives, that crap needs to be figured out and, and, and exploited. And if they keep doing it, we get the one-on-ones, kick their butt. And again, just because they Blitz, you don't have to throw the ball. You can run into some blitzes. I mean, I've been an advocate of not running counter as much, but counter into a blitz is magic because nobody has to go to the second level. You just get your down blocks, you get your kick out, and you get your wrap, and you're gone. All right, starting with the, starting with the Ravens now. A little tidbits. Brandon Stevens has allowed less than a yard of separation on 50% of his targets as the nearest defender this season. Tied for the highest rate this season among cornerbacks. And again, me and Chris talked about this Wednesday. Brandon Stevens is always in position. He just don't make plays on the ball. And I think it's at this point, and me and Chris both agreed on this, he's not really trying to make, like, turn back and find the ball. He's just trying to break the pass up. He ain't necessarily trying to get interceptions, because when he tries to get interceptions, he'll be with the guy, and when he looks for the ball, he loses the defender, and they make catches. So now he's to this point where he's just playing the hands. Hands go up, he raking through them. Hands go down, he raking through them. Use the sideline to push you out of bounds. So Godwin is really basically, I mean, not Godwin, uh, Brandon Stevens in my eyes is really just saying forget the interceptions. I'm just going to get these pass de passes defended because he's really been in the hip of almost every receiver we've played this year. They, now, if they make a spectacular catch, so be it. Can't do nothing about that. The next one, the Ravens are the only team in the NFL to not have allowed an explosive run play 10-plus yards on rushes between the tackles this season because we tough up the middle. Travis Jones. Matter BK, Roger Washington, Michael Pierce, Irvin, stop running the ball up the middle because it ain't going to happen. You get nothing, as they say. Next one, another one, uh, Namdi Matter BK versus Cody Munch. After generating three pass rushes through the first two weeks of the season, Namdi Matter BK has generated 17 pressures over the past four weeks, second among DTs. So, this is my theory. Beginning of the season, People were double teaming Matter BK because he had that great last season. Travis Jones was kicking butt. Now they're realizing how much of an issue Travis Jones is, and they're starting to double team him some. And now Matter BK is starting to win his one on ones and starting to kick butt. So you see how they play off each other. So now you can't double team both of them guys in there. And if you do, the guys on the edge better eat because now they have to put an extra tight end in. They got to put an extra back in. You got less guys in, in going out the, for pass routes. See how all this stuff work together. Travis and Matter BK gonna set the whole defense up. The, the back end just gotta come come with it. The back end gotta come with it. All right, my keys to victory offensively. Establish the outside runs. Vita Vale. 
There's no need to try to constantly test this, man. Yeah, I, I understand we're going to run some inside zone and some stuff inside, maybe some duo and stuff like that. I understand that. And when we do that, make sure to be the Vez, the guy that's double team. I don't care if he at three technique. Make sure he's the guy that's double team. But outside run is going to be the key. I think we can get hook blocks on Tryon Sharinka and I forget whoever the other defensive end is and do our thing. And again, the toss has been our best play anyway. So outside zone, toss, uh, anything that can get us outside, um, the jet sweeps, stuff like that. Outside runs as the base. And then occasionally, once we, or even when Vita Vea goes out, come down here with some stuff. Because that's all going to set up the play action too. I mean, it's just Lamar under center. Turning his back to you, doing this, the defense don't know what's going on because he could boot out, he could pull up and throw that thing, or it's, anything can happen. But that play action has been unlocked, and putting Lamar, I'm sorry, putting Derrick Henry behind Lamar instead of beside him is totally different. Totally different. Then I also have Lamar with easy throws too because, because of the play action, he hadn't had very many tight window throws, which not saying he can't make them, but who wants tight window throws when your guys are wide open? All right, and lastly, on the defensive side, with the exception of Tristan Wirfs, we need to dominate their offensive line. They got a rookie center, a uh, journeyman left guard, uh, a young interior lineman, a young right guard at Cody Munch, Travis Jones, Broderick Washington, Michael Pierce, Matt BK. Dominate. 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 Got to continue to stop the run so their play actually can't be affected. Because I think they do very well in play action. Like, the same stuff that I just talked about that we do well, they do it too because they, they run the ball pretty good. They got We got one guy getting all them yards. They got three guys getting yards. But they still do play action very well. And Baker on time is a pretty good quarterback. It's called a spade a spade. Baker on time is a pretty good quarterback. When you get him off time, when he got to go to read three, two, three, and four, then he can cause problems. Because if he got to get out the pocket and try to make stuff happen, he ain't that guy. He ain't that guy. So get him off his spot. Make him try to play hero ball. And when he gives you an opportunity to turn the ball over, take it. They beat the smoke out of the Saints. They scored 51 points on the Saints. Baker still threw three interceptions. Still threw three interceptions. And they scored 51 points. You throw three interceptions on us, you better not score 51 points. You better score 12. So that's what I got for y'all, man. That's my preview for the Buccaneers versus the Ravens. Again, enjoying the beautiful scenery out here at the lake. Um, that's all I got for y'all, man. I'll see y'all. I think I got one more video for you in the, for you in the morning. Some stuff I, I I saw while I was doing research for this. And um, for those that'll be there Thursday, if you see me, holler. If you see me, holler. I'm sorry, not Thursday, Monday. If you see me, holler. Peace, y'all. Love y'all.